My name is Martin Holland, I'm the director of the Heart of Borneo project and I've just returned from leading our first expedition into central Kalimantan. Uh, my name is Tim van Merkel, I'm the uh, scientific director of the project. Borneo is the third largest island in the world, uh, so it's a very large landmass. It's, it's not completely unexplored, but there is a, a large area of land in the centre of the island which is very inaccessible. Um, there's no infrastructure, um, so there's no roads, for example. The interior is, um, is mountainous and still covered in, in primary rainforest. And this area is called the Heart of Borneo. Uh, well, because it's so unexplored there, there's a lot of biodiversity that we simply just don't know of. Um, for instance, we just came back from our expedition, we found 23 frog species that have never been recorded in that area and are only known from different places. Well, Borneo is one of the most biodiverse places on Earth, and biodiversity maintains ecosystem services. So, for instance, if you cut a certain tree down, other animals rely on that tree, other animals rely on those animals, and the whole ecosystem might collapse. Large areas of rainforest are being cleared for palm oil, which is the biggest cause of the deforestation in Borneo at the moment. When palm oil is planted in areas that used to be forest, the soil will the soil is not as good anymore and will just rain into rivers. The soil will get into rivers, the rivers are not very healthy anymore, fish will disappear, people will not be able to, to fish there or even use the rivers as drinking water. It's the largest stretch of rainforest left in Southeast Asia together with New, the one in New Guinea and it basically the lungs of the earth together with the Amazon. They're actually quite fragile. It's estimated that there are about half a million indigenous people living inside the heart of Borneo. Our relationship with local people is, has been incredibly positive and a very two-way relationship. Um, we relied on two communities that are, that are in our area very, very heavily for transport, logistics, but also for you know, local knowledge. These communities have a very clear understanding of what we now call sustainability. You know, they understand that they rely on the forest. And um, you know, if they want that, that forest and those resources to be around for their, their children and their children's children, then they need to um, manage it properly. So the will and the desire is there from their perspective to, to protect their forest into the future. Different taxonomic groups have different ways of, of capturing them or of observing them. But insects, you collect them by plucking on the branches. Cats, for instance, are very difficult. You never really see one. So what we use, we use camera traps. We put them out in the, in the forest and then leave them for, for a couple of days, months or weeks. And you get, go back and every time an animal has passed that camera trap, it takes a picture. So then we can record the animals that are very difficult to be seen. Frogs, for instance, they come out at night a lot. So you do night surveys and you just shine your torch and you, you can see them, you can hear them as well. There's loads of different techniques really and um, it just depends on the, on, on the animal you're surveying that, or the species you're surveying, that, uh, which one is best. This is a flying frog, a flying frog. You see those um, pedals really, that it uses that to fly and to jump from one tree to another. It doesn't actually fly but it's more like gliding. But in, in Borneo, it's quite funny, in Borneo there's a lot of flying and gliding species and so you've got flying, flying lemur, uh, uh, gliding gecko, flying frog, flying squirrels, uh, flying lizards and people think that it's got to do with the structure of the forest because it's, the trees are not very well connected so they have to get from one place to the other. This is um, an endemic species, the Bornean horned frog. When it doesn't move, and it doesn't move a lot, it, it's invisible really. It 
it looks like a leaf or, or a bunch of leaves because it is weird eye patches it's got it's absolutely amazing the water security the health security the energy security and the food security that forests provide um, both locally regionally and internationally are incredibly valuable you know the long-term cost of destroying the provider of these ecosystem services is in an order of magnitude much greater than short-term income is going to provide.